Now, millions of workers will pay more towards national insurance from today, with the extra money going towards social care and the NHS. There's strong opposition from parties, opposition parties because of the rising cost of living. Well, we can speak now to the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Sir Ed Davey. Morning to you. A rise in taxes for NHS and social care. Is that something you're quite happy about? Uh, this is the wrong time to be raising unfair taxes. Of course, everyone wants to see more funds going to our NHS and care. And Liberal Democrats have argued for that. But to, write, to put the national insurance up now uh, when people are struggling with energy bills, heating bills, uh, petrol bills, food bills, inflation going through the roof, it's just the wrong time. What people need is some support. And Conservatives don't seem to, to get that at the moment. They seem to be taking people for granted. Liberal Democrats are arguing for a big tax cut, a cut in VAT of 2.5%. That would give the average family a £600 a year tax cut. That's the sort of help people need faced with the soaring bills that, they, that, that they've got. OK, let's talk about that emergency cut to VAT. How would the cost of that itself be covered? Well, it costs about 18 billion, so it's quite a big, bold measure, and that's why it provides so much help for so many people. Uh, it would be covered um, primarily by our, our proposed windfall tax on the oil and gas companies. They're making huge profits. That's the flip side of the high energy bills that people are paying. These oil and gas companies making profits which they no one expects them to make, and it's completely justified to ask them to pay uh, a lot more uh, through a windfall tax, so we can make this temporary big cut in VAT. Uh, the Health Foundation is saying that the NHS needs an extra £17 billion. How would you tackle the current NHS backlog that we have been talking about on this programme regularly over the last two years? Well, the NHS and our care system does need significant extra money. That's absolutely right. But we need to do it in a fair way. And one of the reasons why Liberal Democrats have been un, uh, really unsatisfied with the national insurance rise is, for example, it doesn't tax the unearned income of very wealthy people. It doesn't tax the income of landlords. It puts all the burden on working people. That is wrong. So, yes, we need more money for the NHS and social care. The Conservatives starved it of money. One of the reasons why the pandemic was so difficult was the Tories had under... Uh, funded the NHS. Uh, Liberal Democrats have argued to change that round, but we need to do it in a fair way. And what would that be? Well, at the last election, we argued for income tax to go up by a penny in the pound because that does actually spread the burden and make sure the wealthier people do pay their fair share. Uh, that has to be the right way to do it. Um, the problem we've got at the moment is the, co the Conservatives are not only taking an unfair approach to uh, funding the NHS, but they're putting this tax rise up just at the wrong moment. I mean, they thought of it before the cost of living crisis emerged with the, the horror that, that we've seen uh, and with these massive rises in energy bills in particular, uh, the Conservatives could at the very least uh, delay this rise in national insurance to give people some relief from the, the, this cost of living emergency. But this is in fact a national insurance cut for the very poorest in our society. Um, well, I'm afraid uh, if you add in things like the freezing of the income tax allowance, uh, a lot of uh, people are going to be uh, worse off. And let's remember that the most vulnerable in society who are facing high heating bills, uh, they, they don't pay tax because they're retired or they're on benefits. They're getting no support from the Conservatives. That's why this package that the, the Conservatives put forward really doesn't make sense. It doesn't deliver for people who are in uh, real, real problems. One of the reasons that we think uh, the Conservatives should do more is the, the, the heating bills, and we believe that increasing warm home discount, which takes money directly off people's heating bills, is a way to target money on the, on the most vulnerable. I want to bring you back to the NHS just for a moment, if I can, because uh, we know that the NHS is struggling at the moment. There's a, a staffing crisis. What would you do to tackle that? Because it's not just about money, is it? It's not just about cash. It's also about people. You're absolutely right. Um, and part of the problem is it takes a long time to train doctors and nurses and the professional medical staff we need. And because of cuts made a few years ago by the Conservatives, that, that pipeline of trained medical staff is not there. So there is a real, a real challenge, and we've got to think more creatively about it. One way I, I think that they're missing is the, the role of community pharmacists. Community pharmacists are actually the front line there for many people of 
uh, the health service, but the Conservatives have been undermining community pharmacists. Uh, if they supported them more, they could work with GPs uh, to try to make sure that the help is there when people need it. Do you accept, though, that the circumstances that we are in at the moment with the pandemic over the last couple of years and, of course, now the dreadful war in Ukraine has put a unique type of pressure on this government and any government of any type would be in a very, very difficult situation at this point? Well, there's no doubt some of these pressures are unprecedented and no one can deny that. But it's how you have prepared for these pressures and then how you're managing it. I'm afraid the government was completely unprepared for the pandemic. It ignored the advice that had come from experts. They'd done a simulation of a pandemic in 2017, which said the government needed to get more PPE, more ventilators, more NHS staff on acute wards. And the government ignored that. Uh, so that this government has to bear the blame for failing to prepare, particularly given it had advice which you and I had paid for. Um, I'm just interested in your response uh, to the comments yesterday that we heard from President Zelensky, really graphic comments talking about the situation in Ukraine at the moment and what should be done in response to that. I mean, some of the comments are so graphic that we're, we're not reporting them this morning. Some of the images we're seeing coming out of Ukraine are so graphic we can't show them on television. Just your response and what you would be doing if you were in charge of the government today. Well, it is utterly shocking uh, and our heart goes out to the people of Ukraine. Uh, I think the government, our government, actually done quite a good job in supplying military support and we support that cross-party. What I think the Conservative government has been weak on is sanctioning uh, Putin's prone, uh, cronies and I would like the UK and other European uh, partners to do far more on turning the tap of money away from the Kremlin by even trading and importing oil and gas from uh, Russia. You're fueling this war. We've got to stop that. So we need tougher sanctions. I would also say that we need to do far more for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, our European colleagues, countries like Poland and Romania, uh, Germany, others are taking a far greater share of uh, Ukrainian refugees who are uh, having the toughest of times. Uh, and we could do a lot more on that too. Uh, Davy, thank you very much indeed.